so excited to hear Denisha speak. She's the founder of Reclaimed Story Incorporated, an Arizona nonprofit organization to help women reclaim their stories after a painful past. In addition to her work in biblical counseling, she's received her certification as a trauma-informed coach. Denisha is actively part of the Abortion Survivors Network and serves as their healing program coordinator. Will you guys help me welcome Denisha Orkheiser. Thank you so much. Well, today I'd like to share a conversation with you that I had last fall. Um, it was a conversation that helped me to really realize how powerful my story is. And what happened was my phone rang, right? Just a normal day, about two o'clock in the afternoon, my phone rings and I answer it, hello. But what I didn't know was how important that call was going to be. The voice on the other end of the phone said, I understand you know a lot about abortion. I took a deep breath. I had no idea what I was walking into, you guys. It was a normal afternoon. I took a deep breath and I thought, all right, Lord, I guess we're doing this. And I said, yes, I do. Uh, my name is Denisha, what's yours? And she began to tell me her name and she told me that she was seven weeks pregnant and that she wanted to have an abortion. And what she wanted to know from me was what my thoughts were between the abortion pill or the abortion procedure. She said that a mutual friend had connected us and that she said I knew a lot about abortion. So once again, I took a deep breath and I said, okay, awesome. I said, well, you know, let's first, let's talk about your story. Where are you in life? What brought you to this point that you are right here where you're considering an abortion? And I said, you know, no matter what you decide, I'm going to walk with you. And I remember thinking the ramifications of telling her that could have been really hard, right? I was real new at all of this. But I said, regardless of what you decide, I'll walk with you through this. And I'm so happy you reached out and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And I remember after saying that thinking, that's what Jesus would have told her. I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to walk with you no matter what. So she went on to tell me that her mom told her it was not a baby, that it was simply a blob of tissue. To which I replied, oh, I understand. She's being told that by so many different sources in the world. I understand that she said that, but did you know that right now at seven weeks pregnant, your baby has a heartbeat that's different than yours? I said, did you know that right now your baby can feel pain? And I asked her if she knew about DNA. And I told her that right now, at seven weeks, your baby has a completely distinct, different DNA code than you do. And there's a pretty good possibility that you could be carrying a different gender growing inside of your body right now. So I told her, your baby is whole. Your baby is already here. It just needs time to grow. And she told me she had never heard it presented that way before. She said, I didn't know that. I've only talked to my mom so far. So after talking for about 45 minutes, we became fast friends. We shared stories, we talked, and then I felt like it was the right time. And I said, can I share with you my story? She said, absolutely. I said, well, my mom was once in your shoes. You see, she was considering having an abortion. She found herself in an unexpected pregnancy. She had an 18-year-old daughter. She was pregnant, no kids in between. She wasn't married. She was in trouble with the law. And just like you, she was deciding if she was going to keep her baby or if she was going to have an abortion. I said, wow, she was really scared too. I, I didn't understand. And she was wrestling with all of the voices that were telling her what she should do while she was also checking her heart for what she wanted to do and the fears that she was facing. So I went on to tell her that, you know, you asked me about two different procedures. You asked me about the abortion pill and you asked me about a surgical procedure. And what's interesting is my mom had both. See, my mom found out she was pregnant in October of 1975 and she kind of freaked out. By November, she had decided she wanted to terminate the pregnancy, so she took four white pills, the abortion pills. They were off the market at the time, but like I said, she was in trouble with the law, so she had some contacts. 
So she took these four white pills, the first two pills to stop the baby from growing, and the second two pills to force her body to expel the baby. And I said, that was the one question that you had for me, was what were my thoughts on that? I said, well, to my mom's surprise, in December of the same year, she found out she was still pregnant. Even though she had had signs that the pills worked and did what they were supposed to do, she found out she was still pregnant. So then my mom proceeded to have the second thing you asked me about. She went on to have a surgical DNC abortion. The doctors told her it was successful, everything went as planned, and that was in December. In February of 1976, she found out she was still pregnant. This time, she was four to five months along. And at that time, in the state of California, it was, she was too far along to pursue having another abortion procedure. So in July of that year, that baby was born full term. And that baby was me. See, I survived two attempts on my life before I was ever even born. And so when our friend told her that I knew a lot about abortion, she was right. According to the Family Planning Perspectives, Volume 9, in 1975, there were 165,550 legal abortions in the state of California. And I was one of those, but I survived. So we talked for a little bit, and then she said four words to me that stopped me in my tracks. She said, you're like my baby. And I said, yeah, I am. But you don't have to make the same decision my mom did. You, you can have this baby. You can be a good mom. And you don't have to do it alone. So before we hung up that day, I said, may I take you somewhere? And she said yes to a perfect stranger. I went and picked her up a couple days later. And we made an appointment at our local pregnancy center, Hands of Hope in Arizona. And we went in there together, and she was met with love. She was met right where she was. They educated her, and you know what? They told her truth. A couple days later, she got to see her baby. She got to see that little beating heart. And I'm excited to say that two days later, she called me and said, Denisha, I'm going to choose life. I'm going to keep my baby. It was pretty amazing. You know, people can argue with our opinion, but they cannot argue with our experience. And as of today, my work with the Abortion Survivors Network, we've connected with over 400 survivors worldwide. And I found out my story when I was 42 years old. How's that for a midlife crisis, huh? Found that out at 42. But you know what? There's no difference between who I was in my mother's womb and who I am today that would make it morally permissible to end my life. No more than it would be morally permissible to end my life right now. But we know that happens. We know that happens a lot. Did you know that you are more likely to be murdered in the womb than anywhere else in the world? You know, some people believe that a baby is simply a blob of tissue. But we know differently, don't we? See, you are here today, you came to this conference because you tell women the truth. Because you love them and you meet them right where they are when they walk through your doors. You meet them with truth, with love, you show them their baby so that together you can humanize that unborn baby. And so I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your partnership as an abortion survivor. Thank you for all you do to help humanize the unborn because it really makes a difference. Because in the great words of Seth Gruber, if we don't get the right to life right, we're not going to get any rights right.